Hi, I'm Chris from Buddy Pole, and today we're on the edge of a cliff just outside uh, Cannon Beach, Oregon, on a beautiful sunny day. And I'd like to talk today about the Versity Vertical. Um, this is a really outstanding vertical antenna that can be made from the parts uh, from the Buddy Pole and um, very effective from 40 meters through 10 meters. Uh, we also put it on 80 and 60 meters with our larger coil, and I'll talk about that in a different segment. Um, but I'd like to start today just by uh, uh, showing how we, we set up. First, we set up the tripod and mast so it's perfectly vertical. Uh, we can do that on our tripod by virtue of the uh, extendable legs. And so we can put that on any type of uneven terrain. Uh, make sure that the, the mast is completely vertical. And from that point, we screw on the Versity. What I like to do is just put the coil directly on top of the Versity. You can put an arm in between if you like. Turns out it doesn't make a lot of difference performance wise, and it's just easier to access the coil when it's closer here to the Versity. Okay, so we have the vertical, uh, the Versity on top of the mast, and we have the coil in place right on top of the Versity. And now I'm just going to place one antenna arm. Um, you can put as many antenna arms as you want. Any combination off the top of the antenna is fine. Uh, we use our long teles telescopic whips, we use our short telescopic whips. Um, we can use several arms and then uh, one of the military whips on top. So anything to make that antenna as long as possible uh, will give you better efficiency. Typically what I do is I extend the telescopic whip out all the way beforehand. Then I'll place the antenna arm on top and screw it into place. Okay, the next step is going to be to attach our counterpoise. And what we like to do is just use a single elevated counterpoise, a quarter wavelength long. The key to, to the efficiency of this setup is to keep the counterpoise elevated above ground. So typically we say two to three feet above ground. Um, in a park type setting where it's flat, it just grass, we, uh, we like to use an electric fence post, uh, any type of non-conductive stake that you can put down in the ground and keep that, and that uh, counterpoise elevated. Um, out here we'll do something a little different, I'll show you in just a minute. Okay, next we'll attach the counterpoise, and to make that an easy process, we've machined an adapter with 3 8 24 threads on the one end uh, that go into the the, any of the inserts on the on the Versity. And the other end is quarter 20 threads and that accepts our ring terminal from the end of our counterpoise wire. So I'll just place over top and tighten down one of the knobs, same knobs that we use for our coil clips. I'll tighten it down most of the way but not all the way. And then I'll put that into the insert. I usually go to the, the black side of the Versity to run the counterpoise. We'll just turn that in until it's finger tight. And now we'll tighten that knob on the end. Okay, I've hooked up the counterpoise to the side of the Versity. And now, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to put out a quarter wavelength. Um, today I'm going to set up on 20 meters to start with. So that's about 16 feet of counterpoise. And what I typically do is I'll mark this wire. There's a number of different ways to mark it. Um, colored ink pins work fine. Uh, there's colored heat shrink you can put on there at the different, different lengths for the various bands. Um, and sometimes I'm just in the field, I'll, I'll just stretch my arms out and take that wingspan I know is about six feet wide. And if I'm gonna go to, to 16 feet, I'll do that three times. Um, put me about 18 feet and then I'll just back it off just a little bit and that'll get me in the ballpark. Okay, I've locked the counterpoise off at just over 16 feet. Again, this is quarter wave for 20 meters. And out in the field, I'm just gonna use the, the landscape, the brush, uh, tree limbs, anything like that to keep the, the counterpoise up at least a couple feet off the ground. It's usually a pretty simple process just to, to lay it on top of the branches and that'll help hold it up enough that it'll keep those losses down. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to hook up our coax assembly and I'll take the red lead, which is the center conductor of the coax, and I'll put that into the vertical part of the antenna. In this case, it's the blue knob on the top of the Versa T. I'll take the ground side of the coax, uh, represented by the black lead, and I'll put that into the ground side of our antenna in this case, where we hook up our counterpoise. After that, I like to use some strain relief. So we'll just use the Velcro strap that comes with our portable coax assembly. I'll put that around. Now I'm going to talk about tuning the antenna. So we've set the antenna up and we still have it about eye level. We have the counterpoise deployed quarter wavelength, uh, about two to three feet above ground. And I now want to make sure that the antenna is, is resonant or close to resonant before I put it up in the air. One hint that can save you a lot of time is to do this at home before you get out in the field. And you, if you have an analyzer at home, then you can set this up and you know if you have the same setup out in the field, it's going to be very close. I did this at home before we came out and I know that nine turns down from the top uh, is resonant on 20 meters with my 16 foot counterpoise. And one thing to keep in mind is that that holds true as long as you keep the same number of elements on top of the coil. In other words, the same length on top of the coil. I typically use one arm and one standard length telescopic whip. So my nine turns down, that stays pretty consistent for me from day to day. Okay, another way to tune the antenna without an analyzer, and I typically do this when I'm out in the field, I don't want to carry the analyzer with me, um, is just to put the radio onto your intended operating frequency, make sure nobody's there on the band at the time, and turn the noise level up. You can hear the noise now on the, on the rig. So I'm keeping my, my hand away from the coil, and I'm just using the metallic plug here to rake up and down the wire listening for a peak noise. And here it get very loud in through there and back down again. As I come down, getting loud, loud, loud. That's probably peak. And then back down again. So I do that a few times. I'm going to find that peak. And it looks to be about the third turn down from my black markings up above. That should be the sweet spot. Okay, so I've identified this third turn down below my, my black hash mark here from my paint pen as being the sweet spot. I'm going to put that coil clip in, in place. And when I do that, I like to have that open side of the J of that hook facing outwards towards the end of the antenna. And that way, if it does slip off the turn, uh, usually not going to happen, but if it does, it'll short a turn that's already being shorted by the lead. So it won't affect our tuning at all. Okay, I've hooked up the analyzer. And I'm going to see where the antenna is resonant. And it looks like we're resonant at about 14700. It's a little bit high in frequency. And so what I'm going to do now is to lower that resonance point down to the middle of the 20 meter band. And the way I'm going to do that at this point is just to lengthen the counterpoise slightly and that'll move it down in frequency. And now it looks like we're at about 14,150, which is actually ideal, right near the middle of the 20 meter band.